probably what causes most people to think as a saved person they're not. Uh, you are going to have a lifelong battle to the day you die with your flesh. Uh, the day you got saved for me was August 1984. It's 37 years. This flesh did not go away the day I got saved. It's right here. And it desires, if I feed it, to take me to a bad spiritual place. But it doesn't take me out of Jesus Christ. You say, why is that important? Because there are folks I do believe that are saved. But they've never been taught the difference between soul, spirit, and body, a life in Christ, a life in the flesh, a life in the spirit, a life for themselves. And you can think that, well, gee, I did something today, and wow, I, I don't even know anymore. you got a Bible that tells you differently. But I need to warn you about that battle this morning. We'll spend some time before we get into Sunday, uh, into the main service. We'll take, uh, take some time. But before that, let's have a little shrimp cocktail. 1434 says, Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. God's not going to heal your country until you get rid of the sin problem. God's not going to heal any nation until you get rid of the sin problem. And when you parade sodomites and preachers not preaching the truth, and, 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 and I'm telling you right now, it's not going to happen. Your nation has been flushed down the toilet a long time ago. It's just God's been very kind to us. It doesn't matter if you get a Republican there or a Democrat or a whip or whatever. Just pick whatever you want to pick. Unless you choose the righteousness of God Almighty, forget it. So go cast your vote. And if you're saved, why don't you ask God to change you so you can go get somebody saved and maybe the couple of people in the neighborhood get saved. Before you know it, guess what? You've got some righteousness in your town. That's how you change things. Not by picketing outside abortion clinics and, and walking around a pornography store. Get some folks saved. Go tell them about Jesus Christ, man. That's your mission. That's our ambassadorship. Not to get involved in political nonsense. But righteousness is ultimation. But sin, sin's a reproach. It doesn't matter who you are. Sin will take you right down, man. All right. On the, onward and upward. Romans 6. The main service is going to be mostly teaching, so I figured I got to get a little exhortation right now because it's kind of like top, top, top of my heart. Man. Uh, brother, uh, brother Guido, I'm all messed up now. I usually have the Ark of Doom, but now I got to, I got to figure it out. So, brother Guido, can you read Romans six, please, one through six, and then pray for us, please? Huh. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the death by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. If we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Amen. Thank you, Lord, and praise you that we're washed in the blood, that sin does not dominate our lives, that we have power over Amen. your word and our obedience. Thank you for the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ who gathered us here together today. Thank you for one year of existence yeah. as a church. And has been through that and it's your perfect timing. Lord, you strengthen us as a unit. God, we just love you and give you thanks yes. for this day. We ask that you quicken everybody who preaches today. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Doctrinal statement number seven, I'm not reading it for the sake of just reading, but the last part of it says this battle, actually uh, the middle of uh, doctrinal statement seven says each New Testament saint now has two natures, the old man originally created in Adam and the new man created in Christ Jesus. This battle of the spirit-filled led life and the carnal, fleshy-led life will continue until either earthly death or the calling out the rapture. Romans 6, 7, 6, 7 and 8 is a wonderful New Testament doctrine and teaching for you and I as saved folks that the day we got saved, God 
made us new in His Son. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's 2 Corinthians 5.17. That being said, you have an old man, as you read in that passage, that still likes to kick his heels against you and I. It's called this thing right here, the flesh. It can also be a carnal mind. We say, say, we say, preacher, when I got saved, I thought everything was taken care of. Your eternity was taken care of. But your temporary life until the day you go home to heaven is still going to be a battle. And Brother Guido read it. Look at, me, look at me in Romans 6. 6, 7, 8 are phenomenal about this battle. He says in verse number uh, 1, What shall we say that shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? I don't have to live in sin as a New Testament Christian. Lost people have no control over that. Uh, lost people, as I mentioned probably a couple weeks ago, they might get rid of drinking through AA, but they'll pick up something else. They might get rid of that thing they picked up, and they'll pick up something else. Nothing lives in a vacuum, folks. If you emptied out that trash can over there and got rid of all the trash in that trash can, what would be left in that trash can if it was just completely emptied out? You'd say nothing, but who said air? So there is something in it. How do I get the air out of that trash can? i got to fill it with something else. So the day you got saved, God saved you, spirit, soul, but guess who's still down here? Your flesh and your body. And that's what gives you and I the problem each and every single day of our lives. If you don't think, of, if you don't think that's true, just spend a little time examining your thoughts and examining what courses through your head in the, let's just say, the next hour or so. I have no idea what you're thinking about right now. But I know that you have the power through Jesus Christ to think the way God thinks, and He gave it to you in a book. You have the mind of Christ, folks. We have the mind of Christ today. It's found in the King James Bible. People say, I don't know what God wants for my life. Sure you do. It's written in 56th grade English. It's written all through the pages from Genesis to Revelation. We know what God wants for us. We just won't read it, and we won't do it when we do read it. So what's that tell you? It becomes an act of the will. It becomes a disobedient thing where I'm not going to do what the Lord says for me to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. Does that mean you're not saved? No, it means that you're not yielded to the power of the Spirit of God. You are a new man in Christ. Your eternal security has not changed, but who I yield to each and every day is who runs the show. Brother Kenny, go down to Romans 6. Can you read 11 through 16, please? Actually, 11 through 17. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. Amen. And your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Yes, sir. What then? Shall shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to wisdom? Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed the heart that from the doctrine which was delivered you. One more, read verse 18, please. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Did you read anything in those passages, those verses that Brother Cain read? Did you read anything about being lost? Did you read anything about not, not being saved anymore? But what did you read in that, those verses right there? Good old Pauline epistles for you. Right off the bat, the book of Romans. What did he read right there? You know what each and every day is for you and I as a saved person? Who am I going to yield to? You know when you come up to a, 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 a 
portion of the intersection and you got that nice little curve and that merge right there and you got people going straight what's that nice upside down triangular sign say right in front of you yield when you have an opponent particularly with a sword to their throat what are they supposed to do yield to you they give in you have the upper hand you have the higher ground you have the victory over them Every day that I live as a child of God, and every day that you live as a child of God, is one in which I have to make a decision whether or not to yield to Him or to yield to myself. Nothing to do with being saved or lost. Now you can see how people get messed up with, you know what, well I was saved by grace through faith, and I, I, yeah, I believe Jesus saved me, but I did some really bad things after I got saved. I would not ask for a show of hands, but how many of you here have done some horrible things since you've been saved? That's between you and the Lord, man. Or maybe the person you offended, you have to go make that thing right. But I'm telling you what, we've all done stuff since the day we got saved that God says, I saved you from that. Why'd you go back to it? That's where the bottom line is on this thing with eternal security is, I know I have eternal life. I know I'm saved. I believe what God said, but man, sometimes life is just miserable because I yield myself to the wrong person. I like that word instrument in there. When you think of instrument, what do you usually think of? A musical instrument, typically. You go back to the book of Psalms, there's ten instruments listed there. You got two hands, two eyes, two ears, one mouth, two feet, one brain. That's ten. I'm supposed to yield all these members as instruments for him. I wish to God I had done that all the time, but I have not. Uh, it's a battle every day you get up. Uh, if, you don't, if you don't think your flesh is a problem, my friend, as a saved person, try fasting. I mean Bible fasting. And see just about an hour or two in and you open the fridge or you walk by the fridge and that fridge starts talking to you. And you're like, Lord, can I brush my teeth? At least I get some water and a little bit of it. No, man, no. It ain't no toothpaste, man. You might get sustenance from that menthol, you know what I'm saying? You folks, all of us as saved people, you're eternally saved. But you know what? That flesh is going to give you a nightmare if you keep feeding it. I will never forget, and I still to stay hope I never forget, the analogy that Dr. Ruckman used to use. He'd say, you have a white dog living inside you and a black dog. He wasn't being racist or all oh, white and black, all oh, BLM, love. No, he was not what he was talking about. He's saying if you feed that black dog the flesh, and you give him his shots, and you take him for exercise, and you walk him and all that, but you don't take care of the white man, the spiritual man, the new man. When it comes time to win a fight or get in a junkyard scrap, who do you think is going to win of those two dogs? The old man's going to win. That's who you feed, man. It's who you feed. That's why I harp on this book so much. I know how much I read it how much of a wreck I am. That's not his fault. That's my fault. So I can imagine the amount of time I put into it. I hope you put in the same amount of time, man, just to give you a chance at fighting the Christian life. A chance at fighting it. But you won't read it. You won't spend any time in it. I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is. Go with me to uh, chapter 7. Brother, uh, let's see, let's swing on over. Brother James, Lindsay. Chapter 7 of Romans. There's a bunch of stuff in here. I don't, I don't want to... Oh, man. Oh, man, this is, this is, how do you not read the whole chapter, but, hmm. Brother James, can you start in verse number 12 and go down for a little bit, please? I'll, I'll let you know when to, when to shut it down. Therefore, the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, and just, and good. So, very quickly, is there anything wrong with the law of God? What's the problem with the law of God? I don't want to do it. <laughs> ah, uh, don't eat that tree. Why? Don't put your head in the fire. Why? I'm just trying to warn you. Keep on going, brother. Was then what which is good made death unto you? God forbid. But sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good. That sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. <laughs> you know how long Paul's been saved at this point in time in his life? It's about 30 years. And he still says he's carnal. I'm trying to, that, that's a little comfort to you. 
But don't go out of here and go, oh, I'm just going to live currently. Do it. No, no, that's not what he's about to say through the Holy Ghost. I'm just saying you need to realize that you're going to struggle with your spiritual walk with the Lord. Don't quit. What happens is people get upset and say, there's no use to this. There's plenty of use to it. The judgment seat of Christ. Pleasing my Savior. There's plenty of use to it. But what happens is, no, there's no use to listen. I, I can't, I can't live. What did most people say? I can't live this Christian life. What's the first part wrong with that statement? I, you're right. You can't live it. You, you can't. Because what we thought that was the Christian life for 50 years, handing out tracts, tithing, going to church, that is ruining some people's lives, man. If your walk with the Lord is right, you will do those things out of love and a right heart. You won't be forced into some religious nonsense. And we got our religion, boy. Keep on going, Brother James. Now follow along with this. It's going it's to sound like it's confusing, but... Go ahead and read it, Brother, verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that, I, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I, excuse me, if then I do that which I would not, I can sense unto the law that it is good. It, it is good. Now then, it is no more that excuse me, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Look at this. For I know that in me dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. That is, is in my flesh. For, okay, yeah. for the good that I, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. <laughs> now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more that I do it, but sin that dwell in me. I find then in law that when I would do good. Is present with me. Thank you. So one of the craziest things you would get, yeah, Chris was like, what is he talking about? I would have to like read it verse by verse and like read it with the Oh, there's this is this is the novel Sybil from the 70s. <laughs> because you know what he just went through for you through the Holy Ghost? You're a split personality as a saved person. Old man. New man, Amalek, Jesus Christ. I'll show you something real quick in that past. Thank you for reading that, Brother Dave. By the way, you're not the first guy that's messed that up, and you won't be the last guy. I've read that a hundred times. Now, I wouldn't that I would. Hold on, let me start over again. There's no punctuation. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, man, it's brutal. Look at verse 15. For, uh, verse 15 of what you read, brother. For that which I do, I allow not. I'm not going to go through the whole passage, but you know how you can do this? You can write down me, him. I, in the first part, is me. The next one is him. And you break down that whole passage. Me and him, him and me, me and him. And you find out, he doesn't want me to do it, I want to do it. I think it's good, he says it's bad. And you're saying, is that, that's the way it's going to be till the day you die. You might as well go to the nut house right now. Rather a retreat. Whatever, bridge, whatever, wherever you want to go, man, wherever you want to check in, you are going to be a lunatic to the day home to glory. But you don't have to be if you yield to the right person, Jesus Christ. This is a man that wrote the bulk of the New Testament and is our apostle to the Gentiles. And he says, you know what? I've been saved almost 30 years and I'm still fighting with my old man. Well, brother, you know, I believe in sinless perfection. When you go home to glory, you will. It's crazy holiness people saying, I haven't committed a sin since I got saved. You just did right there. You lied. You know, it puts that pressure on you. I'm not saying go and yield your members unrighteous. You know I'm not saying because the Bible doesn't say that. I'm saying you need to know you're in a battle and the greatest battle is between you and the old man. And then, of course, your adversary, the devil, as we preached on last week, he comes right in and takes a little pointer at your flesh because he's been watching you a lot longer and mankind a lot longer than think he has. He knows what gets you. He knows what gets me too. There is a sin which doth so easily beset us. Oh yeah, man. You better believe it.
he's been watching mankind long enough to know, oh, I've seen him do that for a while. Let me just throw that right here. And your flesh is like, I've been looking for that for a while. You know, this praying thing's been getting old. This reading the Bible thing, going, that's old. You know, let me just take a few minutes to myself over here. Don't tell me you haven't done that. It, it's the plague of what we go through to save people. But thanks be unto God, the victory is through Jesus Christ. I don't have to live the old man life unless I want to. You know what's so scary about these passages? As a lost person, as I said earlier, you can't stop sinning. But as a saved person, I'm trying to remember, I think Brother Guido prayed pray it. You don't have to sin. It's an act of your free will. And worse than that, it's usually premeditated. Horrible. Uh, Brother, uh, Brother Burke, can you read uh, the rest of the chapter, please? The rest of the chapter. I'm doing this. You say, what's this got to do with our doctrinal statement? Because you are saved for all eternity. Now what takes place from the point of that salvation is, how am I going to live for my Savior? Am I going to live for myself? Or am I going to live for Him? But it doesn't change your eternal salvation. That's huge, man. A lot of folks, we were real good. I know you're saying, Brother Bert, but you, you took some extra vitamin D today, so you can do whatever. <laughs> Protein shape, but Brother Darren did a couple sets before he got in here. This, we, don't, we haven't taught this in our churches for years. And you say, oh, you think you're smart. No, there's a lot of guys that taught, but not really in our vicinity about the old man, the new man. Like, we were good at getting people saved, but not good at teaching them about the Christian life. Right. And this battle that we go through. And it is a battle, buddy. Go ahead, Brother Bert. Uh, verse uh, tw uh, sorry, 22. Yes, sir. Yeah. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Sure. But I see another law, uh, another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Wow. O wretched man that I am, <laughs> who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, over the flesh of God's Man, I cannot, you can't, I can't even unpack this all. It's just unbelievable. But as a saved person, you know what is going to, what's going to help you in your obedience? You've got to set your mind through this book to follow what he says to do. How many times do we make our minds up to do something? And not even all of it is wicked. I'm not, I'm not saying that. But we make our minds up to accomplish something, to clean the gutters out, to paint, whatever. We make our minds up to do a lot of stuff. Why don't you make your mind up to live a life that Jesus Christ wants you to live? Amen. Why don't you make your mind up to read your Bible? Make your mind up to pray for 15 minutes? Make your mind up maybe to hand out a tract today? Make a mind to go to church? Make up your mind to go to church? I don't know. Make your mind up, but make it up for the Lord. Because the other stuff is, yeah, I just want to... Folks, just leave yourself alone for a little while. You can find yourself in some of the most vile wickedness you can ever imagine. Yeah. Oh, you not me... Oh, yeah, because guess what? It's the old man versus the new man. Brother Bert read it. What's the key, uh, the key little phrase that's found in verse number 22? After the who? After the what? The inward man. You know what a blessing it is to know that I have been spiritually circumcised, my body of sins from the inner man? In the Old Testament, if you die, it, many, that flesh was ascribed to the inner man. Today in Christ, guess what? He cut the old man away from the, the inner man so that your outward flesh doesn't affect your inward man, but it does affect your testimony, and it does affect your judgment seat with Christ, uh, appearance with Jesus Christ. But your eternity is forever in Christ. You're saved for all eternity. But now I've got to get through this life I'm living. And as Brother James read, I find a law then that when I would do good, what does it say? Who's present with me? Evil is present with me. What's the evil in the context? The devil? Brother, I'm, I live at the foot of the cross, Brother Guido. I have not, I have not moved since 37. I'm right there at the cross in the empty tomb with Mary Magdalene. No, you're not. Because evil's with you and you tend to give into that evil more than you do to the, old, the, to the new man. Evil is right there. I've said it before. I'm going to keep saying it. When you bow to pray, how come the phone rings? How come when you get to go to, it's time to go to church and learn the Word of God, something comes up? I didn't say that the ox doesn't fall in the ditch. You know better than that. I'm saying that sometimes you push the ox in the ditch so you don't have to deal with that spiritual man. You've got to be careful about that stuff. But why is it you go to 
do something for the Lord and spiritual fight. Why is it you go to do something for Jesus Christ and because the old man. The old man hates the things of God. What did God need to understand that, folks? Just to help you out. That's why it's that yielding every day. Lord, this belongs to you. It belongs to you. I, 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 I've, had an, I've had enough of me. I've had enough of me. Galatians chapter 5. We, we're not hitting it all this morning, but Galatians chapter 5, please. Brother Darren Maines, can you get uh, Galatians chapter 5? Can you get 16 through 26? Galatians 5, 16 through 26. The old man versus the new man. I thank God I'm a new creature in Christ. And I thank God that I'm, I'm... Folks, if you're in Christ, you couldn't be any more saved than you can be. You're seeing how many places in Christ. You can never, you can never be separated from the love of God who's in Christ Jesus. It, what a blessing that is. But now it's, it's my life and who I'm going to yield to. Brother Darren, go ahead. This I say that walk in the Spirit, they shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, the Spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one to the other. And then you cannot do the things that you would. And if you be led the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, wow. heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you time past, that they which do such things should not be the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, and long suffering, gentleness, Amen. goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, both of one another, and be one another. Amen. That passage, just personally, my own, that creeps me right out. You say, why does it creep you out, preacher? Did you read this stuff in verse number 18? I, I know you did. Uh, uh, excuse me, 19 and, I'm sorry, 19 and 20 and 21. Oh, I don't, I don't believe a saved person can do that. Oh, really? You know what the only thing a saved person can't do? That a lost, lost person, what is it? Go to hell. The only thing that you as a saved person in Christ can't do that a lost person can do is go to hell. Because you're in Christ Jesus. That list is written to New Testament believers. It has to do with walk. If you live in the Spirit, which we do because we've, we've been regenerated, you've got to walk in the Spirit. That means it is a act. It has to do with I would. It's a will thing. What do I want to do today? Do I want to just be idolatrous and full of emulations and wrath and bitterness and all that stuff? Or do I want to have love, joy, peace, love, suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance? Against us, there is no law. If I'm in the Spirit, why would I go back under the law by feeding the flesh? Over in Romans 7, we didn't read the first part of that. You know what he compares you being in Christ and you being under the law to? A man that's put away his wife. I have a new husband I'm married to. His name is Jesus Christ. Grace through faith. The old wife, the one's been his own law. Man. I don't want to hook back up with that. I don't want to be an adulteress and go back and live under the law, under the flesh. But you can. You're not lost or going to hell because you live in the flesh. But you're going to have a horrible testimony before the lost. You're going to have a horrible testimony before other saved people. And you're going to have a horrible report to judge the of Christ. I can't, I can't say that any more emphatically because I don't know about you. I'm thinking about that day. I hope to God you're thinking about it. I want to stand before Him and have something to say to Him other than, I just live for myself, Lord. Well, I know you did, and I want you to tell me about it. Report card day. You know when you come home with a report card and there's Frank and Fran Brown looking at you and you know you got a D there and you're like trying to scrape it out because it was in pencil? And they see the eraser mark, they have to hit that is my report card. Report card day. Report card day in front of the city. Oh, he's not like that. He's loving and kind. Yeah, okay. He is. He's also perfect, pure, and holy, and shed his blood for your sins. He rose again the third day that you might have eternal life and eternal security. Don't treat that. 
like it's just garbage, like you're just going to do whatever I want to do. Well, I don't, I don't believe saved people can get drunk. You can't be a drunkard by Bible definition, but you can get drunk. You can commit, you can commit anything in that list in the flesh, but the Lord doesn't want you to. You know why you'll commit those things? Why I commit those things? Because you yield to the wrong master. You go back to the old man. Go, go, go with me in this passage. Thank you, Ruth, for reading that. Really that this, is, this is a rough passage, man. It really is. I want to clear something up for you in verse 21. Uh, verse 21 says, Envyings, murders, drunkenness, reveling, such like, which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, you would go there and say, See, preacher, that's a... That's a doctrinal statement that says you can lose your salvation. No, what's the passage uh, describing for you and I, Bible students? The works of the what? It's a work of the flesh. I'm already in the kingdom of God the day He saved me. But my inheritance and my reward at that judgment seat could be totally burned up with the prodigal son wasting his inheritance. Still a son, no inheritance. Still in the family, still get to celebrate, have a fatted calf, get to eat the marriage supper, but no crown. No gold, no silver, no precious stones. Well, I'll just be happy in heaven. Not when you see that Savior, you won't say that. Well, I'm just glad I'm not the fires of hell. Yeah, how many of you have played sports before? Honestly, how many of you played sports? Did you just like go in and sit on the bench? Didn't you go to play so you could get in the game? You got saved to avoid hell. Now you're in the game. Now you're in the game. Let's play the game. As a wise old sage out in Lebanon town would say, you got to play the game, buddy. You're in the game. The game is called your Christian life with the ultimate destination being the judgment seat of Christ. And these things will hamper and, uh, hinder you and hamper your appearance there. But they don't have to. They don't. It's an act of the will and a yielding of the members. It has nothing to do with you being saved at all. You're eternally secure in Christ Jesus. Well, why don't you go back into the works of the law? Why don't you go back into the penalty of the law when you're in the spirit? You say you're crazy about that. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to come back to this. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It's a happy Sunday school, but it needs to be taught. And it's not just to, to put some undue weight on you, but I think about this stuff. I hope to God, like I said, you think about it. I think about seeing my Savior. I don't think about, well, yeah, you know, it's just, it's just great to be saved. No, I actually think about the day I've got to give an account of myself as his child in front of him. Uh, yeah, man, it's just, it's, it's heavy. It's, it's a good heaviness. 5.8 of 2 Corinthians says, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent of the body than be present of the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. The day he saved me, I was accepted in the beloved. Do you guys know that in Ephesians 1? So what's this acceptance right here? It's to do those things that please my heavenly Father. I'm already as accepted as I'll ever be because I'm in his family. But now I'm laboring for him that when I get home, he goes, Good job, son. Here's the crown of righteousness, because you love my appearing. Oh, the Lord's not going to do that. Why did he put it in the book if he's not going to do it, uh, brother? I'm not working for rewards, but what about the God of the universe putting a crown on your head? Verse 10. For we must all up here before the judgment seat of Christ. We're not in the doctrinal statement yet in our, in our Sunday school, but the judgment seat of Christ is not the great white throne. That's important because the great white throne is in Revelation chapter 20, where other prophets and other saints from other ages get rewards, and those not found in the book of life get thrown in the lake of fire. We, as New Testament church age saints, are going to the judgment seat of Christ to be judged. How? Look at the rest of the Bible. The verse says, that everyone may receive the things done where? In his, according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also made manifest in your, con uh, in your consciences. He's not judging your spirit or your soul. He's judging what you did in your body after you got saved. That's why Romans 6 now makes so much sense about 
who do I yield my members to? Because one day I'm going to give an account of what I did in this body, whether it's good or bad. We always jump to the bad because we're just negative Nancys. But it doesn't have to be bad. But you're going there. He didn't even say anything about, well, you did bad stuff in the flesh. You're not going there. No, we're going there once you're in Christ. Eternally secure. But i got to watch who I yield myself to. That's why so many Christians, are, excuse me, so many saved people struggle because they're feeding the old man and not feeding the new man. That's why it's distasteful for you to read your Bible, distasteful for you to come to church, and distasteful for you to pray. It's already that way when you're trying to do it. Don't feed the old dog. Don't feed the black dog too much, man. Don't feed him all. Because one day the... Uh, the bill's going to come due, and i got to tell them what I did with this. Go back to Galatians 5, and we got a couple minutes here. Galatians chapter 5. Brother Guido, can you, uh, actually, I had to read. Um, let's do this quickly. Um, go to Ephesians 4. I'll give you a couple verses on the old man. If you have a question, say something, seriously. Uh, eternally secure means I'm saved forever. But it doesn't give me the license to go do what I want. I can do what I want, but you need to know that there's a payday for that. And it's someone the Lord wants for. Me. I'll show you something about the old man. Uh, can you read? Uh, can you read twenty through twenty-five, Guido, please? Would you have not so learned Christ? So be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. And you put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, Amen. which is corrupt according to the deceitful thoughts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man after which God has created in righteousness and true holiness. Amen. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Amen. Be angry and sin not. Okay. Let not the sun go down on your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Okay. Thank you. You've got a great, a great comparison here in verse 22. And he goes on down in verse 24 and he says, the old man, the new man. Old man, new man. Old man, new man. Old man. What's the old man supposed to do? Put it, put it off. What am I supposed to do as the new man? Put it on. What did we say at the beginning of Sunday school? Nothing lives in a vacuum. Well, I got rid of this, this, and this. What'd you fill it with? Well, I got rid of uh, this axe in my life. What'd you replace it with, saved person? Something's going to fill the void when you get rid of something evil in your life. Right. It mm -hmm. could be something evil if you're open to it. Well, I just got rid of the thought that, no, but you, it just, it's an act of your mind. I'm going to put off the old man. But he said, there's some things you need to put on of the new man, and I gave you a book to find out what those new man things are. If you're not in that book, you're not going to know what those new man things are. Old man, new man. Old life, new life. Out of Christ, in Christ. I, mean, I, could, I can't believe he just did that. He was living in the flesh. And that's where people have a great time with us to save people. Save people, commit murder, whatever, and maybe they are really saved. You can murders in that list. It is. And being heresies, it's all in there. What it does is it causes shame in the body of Christ and affects every one of us because now when we go to witness to somebody, what do they say? Jimmy Swagger. Jimmy Tammy Baker. And those are saved men. But what do they do? They get caught up in their flesh. It affects the rest of us and affects you in your testimony. Old man, new man. Go on to Colossians, please. Uh, Brother Kenny, can you get Colossians chapter 3, please? Uh, one, Brother Kenny, can you get uh, one, 1 through 11, please? Colossians 3, 1 through 11. If ye, be then, if, ye, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, Amen. not things on the earth. Amen. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Then Christ, 
What, what, when, when, when Christ, Christ, who is your life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Okay, real quick. Because I have Jesus Christ and I'm in Christ, look at those wonderful verses. And he's coming for me one day. And he is my life. My work is not my life. My kids are not my life. My, no, my life is Jesus Christ. Because of that, now read the next verse. Mortify therefore your members. Your what? Your members. Didn't we just read a whole chapter on the members? Romans 6. Keep on going, brother. Which are upon the earth. There you go. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things say, these things say, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. In the which ye also walked some time, when ye lived in them. But Look at now this. ye also put off all things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthiness, communication, no, uh, filthy communication. Filthy right communication out of your mouth. Why not one another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. There, where, where there is another grief, where there is neither, where there's neither. Nor true, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. And we're not going to read verse so, but put on, put off, old man, new man. It's an act of your will and an act of my will and obedience every day of who am I going to serve today. The things that I do, I would not. Well, that's because the Holy Ghost is telling you, stop doing them, stupid. But the old man says, well, why not? I'm eternally secure. you got to understand some of the crazy stuff that goes on, man. Yeah, I know I'm eternally secure because I am stupid flesh. I'm going to love my Savior and yield my members to Him. How about that? And you keep putting that black dog down enough, the new man, it doesn't become that much of a battle with you anymore. But you got to put off and you got to put on. You have to. Nothing lives in the vacuum. Eternally secure, yes. Struggle to the day home, go on the glory, yes. Flesh, Holy Ghost, all the time. All the time. We don't, we don't have a whole month, lot of time left. Go with it. Aren't you, aren't you glad Sunday school is going so long this morning? <laughs> Romans 13. Thanks, Brother James. I, you know, I always count on you, bro. Right. Romans 13. Romans 13. Thirteen, eleven, brother James, right to the end of the chapter. Thirteen through fourteen, please. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake, to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Okay, when you got saved, wasn't your salvation right then? Behold, now is the day of salvation. Behold, now, now is the accept time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. That, 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 you got saved, that was then, that was now. You got saved immediately. But, uh, Romans 13, 11. Yeah, if you don't hear it, let me know. Romans 13, 11. That salvation has to do with your redemption up off this earth when you're getting home to glory. You might be near to going home to glory either by death or the Lord might come in the clouds. Praise the Lord. Let's go. Talked to a guy yesterday very briefly in, in Southington. He was a saved man. And he uh, got his testimony, I had a chance to talk to, him, talk to him for a little bit, and quoted some Bible and talked about Romans 1, some other stuff. And uh, I, I said, man, I cannot wait to go. And he goes, well, I, I can't wait. I said, I, I can't wait for the Lord to come, really. I just can't wait. And he goes, well, just let's not hope it's too soon. And he, and he said it with a smile. He wasn't, I mean, he wasn't being a jerk or anything. That's my, that's my job. Uh, <laughs> He wasn't being a jerk or anything like that, but it was just, it's strange. I'm like, you're saved. You don't want to go home and glory and get out of this. Aren't you tired of sinning, man? Aren't you tired of wrath and anger? Aren't you just tired of looking at stuff and going, wow, and coveting? I mean, you guys don't do that. I'm saying for me personally. <laughs> when that sunrise orange Lamborghini went through Southington yesterday. I know you saw it. Don't even act like you, sinner. You reprobate. Mid-engine. I'm like... 
you need to get saved and let me drive you. <laughs> <laughs> need to get saved here. Here's a track. Give me the keys. Anyway, I'd use it for Jesus. I'd put a bumper sticker on it. <laughs> you wouldn't read it at 200, though. <laughs> read it quick, buddy. <laughs> Go ahead, man. <laughs> verse, um, verse number 12, please, brother. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Did you just see that? Cast off, put on. Put away, put on. I do have some responsibility in my Christian life to do what the Lord told me to do. He's not going to magically unscrew my head and pour it in. I need to read my Bible. I need to pray. I need to stay in the best I can examine myself as we'll look at in the morning service. Am I walking in the spirit? Or am I walking just the way Dave Brown wants to walk? And you will trick yourself into thinking it's spiritual. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to be careful, man. Don't believe all the spirits. Try them. Go ahead, brother. Let us walk honestly. Honestly. As in the day. Not in rioting and drunkenness. Not in chambering. Wow. Wantonness. wantonness. It's not the stuff at the Chinese restaurant, brother. It's wantonness. It's, a, it's that weird, lascivious, licentious, over-the-top, uh, lustful behavior. It's, uh, he's saying that to save people. Don't do these things. And you know how you do it? Verse 14. Not in strife and envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make Amen. provision for the flesh. To fulfill the lust thereof. The Apostle Paul is telling you, you have these lusts. They're not going away. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and don't fulfill the lusts. They're not going away. You're eternally secure. You're going home to glory. You belong to Christ. But you've got to battle with this guy. You've got to put on Christ. Put it off. Put it on. Why am I thinking this way? Let me get some Bible verses. Do you think I memorized this book because it's just a show off? And obviously, you guys have known me. You guys especially we minister to. Them. And they just sit there. I'm not memorizing the verses to impress you. I memorize because it's just trying to flush the trash out of my heart and my mind. It's trying to have a verse there to battle that sin and a verse there to battle that thought and a verse there to fight that affection. That's why I memorize that book. And because I love my Savior. But you've got to memorize it. Well, it's hard for me. It is hard for you but not hard for the Holy Ghost. Who's the one that causes you to remember these? John 14, 26. If you memorize it in your flesh just to show off, then it's going to fade away. But if you memorize it through the Spirit of God and then He puts you through the trial to use that verse, that thing will stick with you for 50 years, buddy. Last one. we got to go. Exodus. Exodus, please. Exodus. Let's end on a cheery note. Exodus chapter 17, please. Exodus. I can't, I don't know, sorry. I know, you're so used to me. Uh, hilarious. 17. God, the only thing that changed is my suit. You're waiting for me to put the Under Armour in, yeah. in, in a new battle. I know you are. We're so used to the... the Chilling, man. The, yeah, I, I know, I know. I'm refined now, brother. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd rather meet in a t-shirt. It's, it's, it I'm serious, man. Uh, but then we lose our membership. No. Yeah. That and the Pauline epistles, man. Anyway, 17.8. I want to read this, and then we'll, then we'll, we'll get going. Actually, you know what? Brother Burke, can you read uh, 8 through 16? And then we'll make some comments, and you, you can pray for us. But uh, Exodus, is everybody there? I want you to see this. Exodus 17, verse number 8, right to the end of the chapter. Then King Amalek fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out of men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and Hur, Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And he let it let down his hand, Amalek. So crazy. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat there on it. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until like going down to the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with 
the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write, uh, write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. Amen. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. For he said, Because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. You're shaking your head going, What in the? Amalek is a picture of the flesh. Amalek's a real person. He's the grandson of Esau. It's Genesis 36. The Tim of the concubine. Esau's son goes in. They give birth to Amalek. Amalek is a picture, a figure, a similitude of this guy right here, the flesh. I'm using an Old Testament reference to bring you to a New Testament truth. What could the last verse of that chapter say that God's going to have war with who? Uh, for how long? And guess how long you're going to have war with your flesh? Day you die. But well, what did he say? How could you get victory and prevail over Amalek? You discomfit him with the sword. You know what it means to be discomfited? It doesn't fit. Not comfortable. It doesn't. It's kind of. It just doesn't. It's not right. You know how the flesh doesn't like it when the sword starts slicing him off. And that sword you have in your hands, in your lap, that King James Bible right there, and your flesh hates that thing. And that's good. Because the Lord said, I'm going to have war with Amalek till the day you die. But you can prevail against them. You don't have to walk, no, 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 putting on the Lord of Jesus, getting that book in your heart and your mind, and obeying what the Lord said. Brother Burke, pray for us, please. Thank you. And Father, thank you for the Word of God. Lord, thank you for the Spirit of God that can give us victory in all these things. Lord, thank you that you spell things out for us. Amen. Lord, thank you for the benefit of New Testament salvation. Lord, yeah. Lord, for the circumstances that those things don't affect our soul. Uh, Lord, I help us to... Uh, not from that the attitude of providing provision for the vet. Uh, yes, flesh to do whatever we want more, but helps to be grateful and thankful for what you've done for us and love you and want to uh, take advantage of the blessings you've given to us in uh, the uh, ways of victory. So thank you for the word of God, thank you for being here, uh, thank you for uh, Brother Dave studying and teaching us uh, what I pray that you say great to you and each one of us as well. Helps to be the witness of the atmosphere this week. Amen. Break for a little bit. Come back. Keep going.